Hello everybody. In this video, we are going to learn how to find the area between two curves. Well, we have already learned that a definite integral of a positive integrand function will give us the area under the curve. With only a minor modification of our point of view, we can derive a formula for the area between two curves. Now, let's look at this figure. Actually, the functions f and g are both continuous on the interval a, b, and the area between these two curves is integral from a to b f of x minus g of x dx. Now, to understand this formula, we don't really need any additional techniques of integration or theory. We just need to remember that if we integrate f from a to b, actually you, we know that this will give us the area under the curve. I denote it by a. Also, the area under the curve g can be calculated from a to b, the integral g of x dx, which I denoted by b. As you can see, if I take the difference of these areas, I will get the area between these two curves. Now, before we solve some questions, I want to give you some tips for success. When you are calculating the area between two curves, the first step you need to take is find the points of intersection of the curves, of course, if there is any. The second step is graph and determine which curve is bigger. If the bigger curve changes in your region, then it means you need to split the region into subregions. And the third step, you need to determine the limits of integration. Now, let's look at this example. Area enclosed by the parabola y equals x squared minus 2 and the line y equals minus 6. Well, we already know that we need to find the intersection point of these two graphs, which means I need to find the x and y coordinates which makes these equations a true statement. So I will use substitution. y equals x squared minus 2 and at the same time it is equal to minus x which means x squared plus x minus 2 is 0. At this point I need to think about two numbers whose sum will be 1 and whose product will be minus 2 which means I need to multiply x minus 1 and x plus 2. Here we go. Now, that will give me that x is either equal to 1 or x is equal to minus 2. Now, we find the intersection points. I already wrote the graph of these, this parabola <coughs> and the line. As you see, the parabola opens upwards. It intersects the y-axis at minus 2 and the x-axis at 2 points minus square root of 2 to square root of 2 and this is our line. They intersect at two points, minus two and one. Now, what was our second step? We graphed it. Now we need to determine which curve is bigger. In other words, which y is bigger? For that purpose, I will draw an arrow that passes through our shaded region and parallel to y-axis. Here we go. Okay? This arrow leaves the shaded region on the line and enters in the shaded region on the parabola, which means the line is bigger than the parabola. So now, the second thing you need to do, you need to decide if you drove this arrow somewhere else inside this shaded region, whether the bigger curve changes. Actually, no. If I draw it here or there, the bigger curve is always the line. Now, let's write the area integral now. Integral, the integration limits, as you can see, for the shaded region, it changes from minus 2 to 1. Here we go. First, the bigger curve. The bigger curve is the line, minus x, minus the smaller curve, which is the parabola, x squared minus 2 dx. Now, when you solve this integral, you will get minus x squared over 2 
minus x cube over 3 plus 2 times x where x changes from minus 2 to 1 which means minus 1 over 2 minus 1 over 3 plus 2 minus the lower limit of integration which is minus 2 so minus 4 over 2 uh, minus 2 cube is minus 8 so plus 8 over 3 minus 4 which actually is equal to 9 over 2 so the area of this region is 9 over 2 but what if they ask us instead of the, this region but this region then the things will change now the intersection points won't change but you see when i want to decide the curve which one is bigger again i will draw a line parallel to y-axis as you see for this one it leaves the region from the line it enters the region from the parabola on the parabola but actually for the blue one that is not correct our bigger curve changes now again let's draw the arrow this time it leaves from the parabola but it enters from the line that's why we need two integrals okay the one in orange let's write the integral integral as you can see for this subregion the integration limit changes from 0 to 1 the bigger curve is minus x minus the smaller curve again is the parabola x squared minus 2 dx that is not enough this only gives me this subregion's area for this one in blue, I need to write another integral, which is actually when you look at your shaded region, the x coordinate changes from 1 to square root of 2. This time, your bigger curve is the blue curve, which is x squared minus 2 minus the smaller curve is the red one, which is the line minus x. So the sum of these two values will give us the shaded area so far we use this formula when calculating the area between two curves by integrating along the x-axis now we are going to generalize this and find an equivalent formula for integrating along the y-axis let's look at here i have two curves x equals f of y and x equals g of y they are both continuous on the interval c to d and the area formula is integral from c to d f of y minus g of y dy now let's look at several examples in this question they ask us to find the area of the region bounded on the left by the y-axis above by the curve y equals cosine inverse and below by the curve y equals sine inverse so x I've already drawn the graph of these right now if you want to take an integral with the integration variable being x then we already know that we draw a line parallel to y-axis it leaves from the blue curve which is cosine inverse of x it enters from the red curve which is sine inverse of x this is the integral we need to deal with but the question we need to ask to ourselves, do we really want to integrate cosine inverse or sine inverse? Most of us will say no. So what can we do is basically we can change the integration variable. So instead of dealing with this integral, I'm going to solve a different integral. So this time I will integrate it along the y-axis. <clears throat> now i need to decide which curve is bigger <clears throat> so instead of drawing a line parallel to y-axis this time i'm drawing a line parallel to x-axis here we go now as you see this arrow leaves from the red curve which can also be expressed as x equals sine y and enters 
from this curve, which is the y-axis itself, which I can express as x equals 0. But this is only true when y changes between 0 and pi over 4. So actually, I need to divide this region into two, the one in blue and the one in orange. Now, I can write my integral. y changes from 0 to pi over 4. Bigger curve is the red one, which is sine y minus the smaller curve, which is 0 dy, which gives the area of the orange region. And then I need to add the blue region's area, which means the integral from pi over 4 to pi over 2. Let's draw an arrow again. It leaves from the blue curve. Here we go. The blue curve is the curve x equals cosine y, and the smaller curve does not change. It's the line x equals 0. So this is equal to cosine y minus 0 dy. So if we in, let me solve this one. This is minus cosine y from 0 to pi over 4 plus sine y from pi over 4 to pi over 2. So first the upper limit cosine pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2 minus cosine 0 is 1 plus sine pi over 2 is 1 minus sine pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Actually this is equal to plus 1 plus 1 that is 2 and I have 2 times square root of 2 over 2 which means square root of 2. This gives me the area of this region as you can see. Compare these two integrals, okay, two area integrals. Actually, this one is much easier to solve compared to this one. In this video, we learned how to find the area between two curves and solved several examples. I hope this video will help you in your studies.